Hi, this is Jean Jacques Taylor, and you're listening to Jot Talk. This is a podcast where I talk about the Cowboys, the team I've covered as a beat writer, columnist, TV insider, and radio host for 28 years. I'll also talk about the NFL and the things I love working out, streaming, food, and all things down. Welcome to Jock Talk, where sports is fluid. What's true today might not be true an hour, a day, or a month from now. I'm going to give you the truth straight, no chasing. Glad to have you aboard. Let's get it. Welcome to episode 129 of Jock Talk. I'm John Jacques Taylor, joined by my good friend, my brother in Christ, one of my favorite people on the planet, Big Joe the Big Rig. What's the sit rep today, my brother? All of that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what, man? Bruh, bruh. What, man? I'm asking for the sit rep. I'm just trying to be professional, dog. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to do. What you talking about, man? Hey. Hey, what go on before we start, <laughs> don't have to carry on after we start. You understand? I'm, I'm a professional. Let's <laughs> see, we are one minute and 17 seconds into this show. And we are, uh, technically, we five by five. Emotionally, I'm not sure. <laughs> ah, that is music to my ears. Uh, let's get, we're going to talk about 29. Can it be anybody other than Kenny Gant? That's it. Robert okay, Levet, maybe, maybe Robert Levet. Boy, you went deep in the archives for Robert Levet. Georgia Tech, Robert <laughs> Levet. I ain't thought about Robert Levet, and I couldn't even tell you when. Uh, but let's get Clarence e. Hill Jr. on the phone. Uh, he's at training camp in Cali. He's brought to us each and every Friday. Smokey John's Barbecue, 1820 West Mockingbird, home of the Jam Session Bowl. What's up, fellas? What up? What's up, man? I, I, I want to know, of all the cars you pick, why you decide to ride around Cali in the next month in a convertible Mustang? Well, first of all, I do have that choice. <laughs> uh, as a member of Nationals uh, um, <laughs> Elite Program, Classical Show Club, Emerald Isle, I can pick any car on the lot. <laughs> and in LA, they have plenty of choices. It's the same price as my choosing a uh, a mid-sized car, you know, which is on my right, profile. Right. So I, I, I grab a nice car and I decided I'm going to give me out. I, I mean, I've, I've done this before. I've had a, uh, you know, different type of uh, souped up Dodges and different things, you know, whatever's nice on the lot, I try to get. But you're going to let the, are you going to actually let the top down and let the hair the wind blow through your hair? Top down, my brother, I love the, you know, I let the, let the California wind run through my hair. <laughs> my PWA, I let the top down. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. Glad to hear that. Uh, Clarence is in his, uh, what is it, your 28th consecutive training camp? The eighth straight. That's a lot of training camps. Straight camps. 28 straight camps. 28 straight camps. And again, as I always like to remember, None of them have ended with a trip to the Super Bowl. <laughs> mm. Now, Chill wants you to know it's not his fault. As he put on a <laughs> post the other day, I raised champions, state gymnastic champions, I, 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 NCAA it, it, yeah. Image Award champions. <laughs> it, 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 it's bigger than me. It's not my choice. But yeah. I, I've been here, and, and it was funny because somebody asked me the other day about Jared Jones' trial, and this is going to be a controversy, and how it's going to – Man, effect. I said, I've been on the beat since 1998. My first year on the beat, Barry Switzer got arrested with a gun at the airport. We were doing <laughs> Michael Irvin trial. And it's been like that ever since. I mean, was, was, this is part for the course for the Cowboys. Um, wow, I just saw something. Uh, we're going to, I'm, I'm going to set the ground rules. Now, you know what? We're not even going to go there. We're going to talk about that. On another date, because I don't know that we could take that exit ramp and get off of it. Uh, but I'm going to say this, since I just said we were not going to talk about it. Because I just saw something as I was scrolling on Twitter before we started this conversation. And, you know, this whole political scene is going to be very interesting to me. Because it appears right now, and we won't know for sure until the Democratic National Convention, but it appears for all intents and purposes, that Kamala Harris will be joining, will be running for president. And I just don't know if the Republican Party, as it's currently constructed, can avoid the sexist, racist, misogynistic language that's going to be associated with her 
to get a dub. Because I think they will turn off so many regular voters who want to focus on issues. And I'm saying that because I just saw something that said a business guest on Fox referred to the president as, as the uh, candidate as the original hot tour girl. And I'm just like, you would never say that about a presidential candidate, whether it's a man, a woman, whatever. The disrespect is just, is just uh, off the air. We haven't really even started the, the, uh, the deal yet. So I'm sorry, I was a little shocked by that. Uh, and not much yeah, shocks it, me these it, days. It, 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 it's racist. Let's just call it what it is. Disrespectful, oh, yeah. disgraceful. It, 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 it's disgusting and it's racist. And to, for anybody to bring up Kamala Harris's, Kamala Harris, excuse me, Kamala Harris's dating history or anything else and yes. not point out the issues with the former president who's been accused of rape and who has kids by three different women and all the other stuff that he's gone through, it's just, it's just, it's disgusting and racist. That's what it is. That's what it's based on. It's misogynistic and it's racist. And we don't do that with men. And we want to do that with white women. We want to do that with this black woman. And, and, and that's where it is. Yeah, and it's disappointing. And uh, we're going to move on. But um, I thought that was worthy of a discussion. You got anything to chime in, Big Joe? Yeah, as a veteran, as a, as a, as a patriot, as a person who fought for this country, it seems like no matter what you do, they're going to point out the obvious. You know, it's, it's, it's racism is low-hanging fruit that they, they they refuse not to pick. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? That's 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 what drives me nuts. You know, and, and, and I don't know. It's just one of them things where, you know, um, I always say this, and I'm going to get off of here because all that stuff really pisses me off what y'all talking about. You know, sometimes you got to love a country or fight for a country or work hard for a country that don't love your ass back. True that. And that's, that's, that's all I'm going to say about that. All right. Let's, uh, let's take care of this housekeeping on football before I get to my questions of the day for chill. Uh, C.D. Lamb, Content Dave wants to know, uh, is it going to get done anytime soon? <laughs> what is soon? What is soon, man? Soon to me, soon to me means within the next three weeks, three or four weeks. Because training camp, because a month from now, I would say three weeks, because that's still yeah, yeah, a week or so before the start of the season. You know, um, a lot of times, you know, Jerry takes a hard line stance and we'll get to talk to Jerry for the first time of the day and we'll ask him about the city lamb holdout. And then he kowtows. You know, when when does it, when does, when does, when, you know, you go last year, you remember early rhetoric on Zach Martin. Was he already been right. paid and all this other stuff? And all of a sudden, Zach got his money. And, you know, right. go back to the Zeke thing and Zeke who? And he was in Cabo. <laughs> and what are they? The 40 nights in Cabo. And then all of a sudden, he got all his money. So, um, uh, once you see this receiver call on the field, <laughs> without the stop time, it, man. <laughs> stop it. <winning. laughs> well, you got to understand that none of them they were never going to play. City and the starters were more going to play in the preseason anyway. Right. But but this CD, this receiving call without CD Lamb, even with CD Lamb, I, I've said, consistently said, is one worst in the league. But without uh, CD I'm Lamb, a, it, I'm going to stop it, you right there it, for it, just a second. I think it was 2017, I think. When we were out in training camp watching it, and the offense couldn't move at all, and we were all on the sidelines talking like, "Are they really this bad? Is it really going to be this bad? I mean, they can't do anything." That was twenty eighteen. Okay, and it proved that they got rid of Dez and had to receive him by committee. (laughs) That's what. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I asked you. I asked you about that that year. You you know what you said? You said they think the system is going to get them guys open. Yeah, I yep. was like, "What the in the world?" Yeah, now, you know, depending on your that, but that wasn't a system to do it because that was a system where you beat the man in front of you. It wasn't a system that schemes you open. It was you just beat the guy in front of you and yeah. get the ball. Yeah, that, that, so, but that what they were saying. Yeah, yeah, they uh, was. Who was that? Helen Hurts some and before. some other people. And... Yeah, but I just remember it was so bad in practice. That we were, it was, it was just, it was obvious that like, man, they can't do nothing in practice. What are they gonna do in games? 
so it's interesting that you have a similar vibe or similar feel, even though there haven't been that much practice just yet. I mean, you know, I mean, ever since they got rid of Mari Cooper, this, this receiving core has, has been a disaster. And, you know, there's no one that scares you, no, no weapons outside. And, and, and that that's part of CD's leverage. I mean, come on, you know, this whole it's a passing team, pass offense. It, it, there, there's no path forward without CD Lamb, and, and you know, it, you know, people say, well, he's not worth what Justin Jefferson is making. Well, to the Cowboys' offense, he is. Yep. It's all about what you work to that team. To yep. the Cowboys' offense, he, he's worth every bit of what Justin Jefferson is getting. Yep. Now that's uh, you know, people. Um, that's one of the all-time that's great conversations. Like, like, <laughs> I was gonna say it's really one of the all-time great conversations. You're worth what you're worth to me. Well, that's the that's the as Warren, a unit. That's the Warren Moon Joe Montana argument. When Warren Moon made more money than Joe Montana, his agent said, "Hey, Lee Steinberg said, hey, y'all don't have Joe Montana. Y'all got Warren Moon.'" <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is. You worth what you worth to me. Um. And that determines your worth and how much we pay you. And, you know, if we don't have a viable alternative, then your value goes up. Or, you know, if we can't replace you, it's like any employee-employer relationship. Uh, the greater your value, the greater we have to pay you, regardless of what the market bears. Because we need you. Uh, I was going down a rabbit hole, but I don't think I need to go there. Okay, let's check into this. Uh are we agreed that CD got to get done before Dak or anybody else gets done? Well, he don't got to get done, but he's the one that's most urgent because he's not here. Dak ain't going nowhere. Dak is here in camp. You know, and so if you want him here, he's the one that gets, that's up first. Uh, but you can sign Dak tomorrow and CD the next day. You know, it doesn't matter the order, but yeah, if there's a priority, CD's a priority because he's not here. All right. Well, let's get into this. Because this is how I figured we would spend our time today. Uh, I was looking, I was reading something right before uh, the show started, which is why me and Joe was arguing before the show. Although he's much more professional than me, for sure. And uh, <laughs> take it and to I the just, bank. Take that to the bank. You know, I mean, let I, I me mean, stop it. Uh, and so I came up with these ten players to watch, but I, I did them off the top of my head based off of something else I was looking at. So they're not in any order per se. I'm just going to run them off to you, and let's talk about these guys. And obviously, if we're talking about 10 players to watch, they're not necessarily the, the biggest of the best, biggest names on the team. But I'm going to start with this guy, Sam Williams, who I think has the potential to be a good player. I think he's, he's kind of an average player now, but he's flashed enough where it feels like he could be a good player. What do you think? Well, they need to be a good player. The Cowboys don't have any depth. They lost two, you know, two of their – Top backup defensive ends and free agency to Washington uh, Commanders. They need Sam Williams to find his level. He has potential, you know, former big time pass rusher in SEC. He's but he's so undisciplined. You know, he's so athletic. I mean, they had him as a gunner on the special team. That shows yeah. how athletic he is, how fast he is. Yeah. But he, but his his he has a problem with discipline and, and breaking down and stuff like that and, and untimely penalties and stuff like that. But if he could harness all that, and I think that. Zimmer will help him because he's going to make sure he's fundamentally sound and take the sound and he's going to get on about that discipline. He, you know, he'll have the chance to unlock his potential. But Let me ask yeah, it's, this. It's time, for, it's time for Sam Williams to show up. Um, Doris Armstrong, I think a, a good player, solid, underrated player. He had uh, 16 sacks the last two years. Can Sam Williams get eight sacks this year? But Mike I mean, he had four and a half side, last year. People, people should fall in the sacks. You know, with, 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 with parts on the other side, people should fall in the sacks. I'm, I'm sorry. Yes, he should be able to get eight sacks this year. He has that type of athletic ability. Okay. Now, you, you, I don't know. I, I feel the tinge like you, like eight sacks, eh, whatever. Is that is that how you well, feel I mean, about it? It's hard for me to predict somebody doing something they've never done. And so, I, I mean, I just don't project. Because you know, until the, you know, you done it, you haven't done it. I, I just can't. It's not my job to project. You know, I, I didn't see what you can do. You know, and, and, and he's no one stopped him from doing it in the past, but himself. 
Well, I mean, I think amen to that. You got to you got to stay out of trouble too. Yeah, yeah, he got trouble on his resume. Uh, So, so we'll see if he can do that. But he's just an interesting player to me because he's flashed. And uh, when you flash, that means you haven't been consistent for whatever reason. Could be playing time, could be discipline, whatever. But you haven't been consistent. So he get he gonna get enough playing time this year to be consistent. And I'm interested to see what he can do with it. Next cat who comes to mind, Deron Bland. Was last year real and who he is? Or was last – not six interceptions. I mean, I don't think you return the six picks for touchdowns again. But is that – is that is the player we saw last year the player we're going to see every year? Or was that just a, a one-year aberration? Yeah, that's a question. I think he's a good player. He's been a good player. If you go back to his rookie year, he had let, let the Cowboys intercept him. He has a knack for intercepting the ball. You know, yeah, but, 14 you know, in two seasons. Him. Yeah, we also remember that, that Seattle game when, when he got to expose. He doesn't have long speed. He can get run by at times. He's good at jumping routes. That's what those were Same with, with Trevon Diggs. But, you know, and that's why, you know, again, I think Zimmer will help. He will help his scheme and help his technique and help a discipline to really be a consistent and solid cornerback. But we know he has a knack for taking the ball away. Even in that game against Seattle, it's funny, you know, they took you know they, they took him off the best play and he's getting beat like a drum. <laughs> uh, put him on another player, and of course, before the game was over, he had another pick six because he can jump <laughs> and take it to the house like nobody's business. Yeah, well, I mean, that's a great skill, so I ain't mad at him. I just wonder is he going to be a Pro Bowl caliber player or is he going to be an average caliber player? I mean, it's right, just a I solid think, guy. I mean, on paper, the Cowboys have the best one of the best cornerback duos in the league. On paper, they have the best cornerback duo in the NFC. With, with with Diggs and 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 with Bland, I mean I don't know how you can say otherwise. I mean, you know, you he's been consistent. I, I, I going back to, again, he was cons- he was consistent as a rookie. He started flashing as a rookie, you know, right. when he took off last year. Really got a chance to shine, but he's been making plays. It ain't been no he has not been. It wasn't no flash in the plan. You know, he just got more opportunity to play last year, and he showed you people went after him because he was young and he. And then they didn't know what he had, and he, and he made them pay for it. But he's this is who he's been since he showed up. All right, that leads you. You led me nicely into the next player on my list, Trayvon Diggs. And to me, he's a player to watch because even though the uh, technology has come, you know, ten million miles in a short period of time, people coming off of ACL still typically aren't the same dude the first year back as they are two years removed from the surgery. So first year back, what kind of expectations do you think we got for Trayvon Diggs? Well, I mean, the guy would need Trayvon Diggs to come back and be Trayvon Diggs. I mean, there's no question about that. You know, they, they need him to be that lockdown number one corner. I mean, that, 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 that's what it is. Uh, this is always the uh, argument me and Clarence get into. You just said they need him to be the lockdown cornerback. My question was, would a knee injury prevent him from doing that? I understand that. What your question was, I, I'm just saying that, you know, don't tell me about the labor, tell me the baby. I mean, <laughs> this, this is the result. This, this is all about this year. Everything is about this year. People's jobs on the line this year. The can't coach might not be there this year. Even the quarterback not, might not be back next year. No one has jobs beyond this year. You know, so much is at stake. They need him to be. I don't know if he's going to be that. I mean, the fact that there's a chance he can start the regular season on PUP is, to me, is a concern. Not to a regular season. But training camp is on PUP, and we'll find out today is a concern right. to me because he got hurt in October. And I'm like, why? He got hurt early October. I don't know why he's not ready to go. Uh, but, you know, if, if he starts the opening camp on PUP, you know, that's a concern to me. Uh, but they need him to be that. They, they need him. They don't need him two years to be great next year. Right. They don't need him. I mean, they, they, you know, they, 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 they let uh, Gilmore go. Uh, he's still free. They let Gilmore go. They bring him back because they are counting on Diggs to be ready to go and play and start on the outside of, uh, opposite um, the young yeah, kids. I mean, it's, it's, that's not a question about that. So it's not what, what I think is this. This is what the Cowboys need to happen. 
Well, see, and, and as I know what they need to happen. I think and the only question is whether it, it can happen. I mean, you can want it yeah. to need it all day long, but physically, if you can't well, do that, then you just can't physically do it, no matter what they need. And we won't know till the game start. But I'm like you; I was a little, a little surprised based off of the reports you've been hearing that that he's going to start the season on pup. So it'll be interesting to see if that's just a procedural move, or if he's, you know, more about him. If that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I hope it's procedural. I hope it's just being cautious. But but you know, and we'll see today what they what they officially do. But you know, uh, um, again, they 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 need him to be ready. And I'm going to say it like this, and I tried to preface it like that. With technology today, you expect injuries to heal in a certain matter. But the one thing, and I got cussed out for this a lot early in my career, everybody's body is different. And so if I can step off to the side for a second, we talk about like the Rangers, Josh Young, their all-star third baseman, broke a bone in his wrist. Based off of all the projections and what normally happens, they thought he'd be ready the middle of June. And he started to ratchet up. He's like, oh, this bone didn't heal the way it heals in, you know, 90, 95% of the cases. And it's taking him another month to get ready. And so, yeah, they expected him to be back. But it took just more time because everybody's body different. And so that's really my only point with Diggs is that, you know, you can want it and need it and expect it. But, you know, the body in these injuries is crazy. And they don't always line up with our, with our timetable. So no, that's why he's. You got, you got, you got DeMarvion Overshaw coming off ACL. They need him to be ready to go. Well, he got hurt in camp last year. I mean, these are things that the Cowboys are projected and counting on. Now, I saw the weird. I read the weirdest thing, but it came from a place. I read a lot of stuff, even if I don't respect the people per se at the highest level. But the next player on my list of players to watch for your Cowboys in this 24 training camp is the first round pick. Tyler Guyton. What do we need him to do? I mean, you need him to, re, you know, be a the blind side protector of your quarterback, Dak Prescott. Excuse me. You know, he, he's replacing a future Hall of Famer, and 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 he has to show up and be ready to be a blind side protector. He's athletic, you know. Uh, he's smart. He's a hard worker, but he got to do it. And, and and there will be. Um, you know, some growing pains, as, as there should, you know. But, you know, you, you, you need him to be ready to go from day one. He's, he's, he's you drafted to be your opening day starter. He needs to be your opening day starter. I mean, you drafted last year's number one for the opening day starter. He didn't do anything. He didn't pay a drop. But this year's opening day starter, you know, you got the, the health of your quarterback, your franchise quarterback, possibly one day as soon as your $60 million man. He got, he got to be ready to go. Did you like that pick when they made it? Is that a pick you're like, oh, yeah, okay, I like that one? Well, I mean, he played right tackle in college. You know, there were a lot of tackles on the board. A lot of people were falling. You know, he thought they could fall. He wasn't necessarily, you know, the difference between him and Tyron and some other guys is that no one said he was the best tackle in the draft. You know, when Tyron came back and he was the top 11 pick, you know, he was one of the best tackles in the draft. You knew he had greatness right. ahead of him. You know, Tyler – uh, you know, Guyton is, 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 is good. He's a good prospect, but no one's going to say that he was the best tackle in the draft. Probably not even the best top three or four tackles in this draft. You know, but you hope, you know, you, you got a player, you know, that can do that. So, I mean, he was a good player at Oklahoma. They give up a sack and he was a right tackle, get ready to move the left tackle. But, you know, he was not of the level of Tyra Smith coming out. Uh, Joe, is that a pick that you like coming out? Yeah, I liked it. I think Oklahoma had a left-handed quarterback. Maybe that played him at, at a. Maybe that's why they played him at right tackle. What happened? You there, oh, Chip? No, that's. Yeah, I'm listening. Okay, but no, okay. I just I think it's a good pick. Uh, I thought the Connor Beebe pick was a little a little more important because you can help the left tackle. You can't really help the center. That's, that's the quickest way the quarterback is up the middle. Well, so, I'm, glad you brought up Cooper, I'm glad you brought up Cooper Beebe. I yeah, Cooper, him. I'm sorry. Cooper yeah, Beebe, to me, may have been the best pick on the board. Roger that. So he's, the biggest, he's the biggest, nastiest center the Cowboys have had since Andre Girard. Love Travis Frederick, but he was more of a cerebral guy. He wasn't a big, nasty guy. Yeah, yeah. Right. Andre Girard was a big, nasty center. The biggest, yeah. nasty center they've had since Andre Girard. Super you know, this nasty. guy is, yeah. a, is, a, is a 
He was a guard who road graded people. Look at his tape against we talked about it. You have the Texas defensive tackles who were drafted high in the draft. He he he, he liked the pancake people, he liked to put people on that butt. He, and he's also cerebral to, to get him to come in and, and, and be centered. And he had, even added with Tyler. And I've said this before that and there's so much talk about the running back position and, and the lack of quality running backs and, and I, I think the Cowboys have a chance to have a solid run again because the run blocking will be better. Tyler Guyton will be a better run blocker from the jump than Tyron Smith was. And certainly Cooper Beebe has a chance to be a much better run blocker than uh, Tyler Beattis uh, that left to go to Washington. So they have a chance to be better run blockers up front, which can help to run a game. And this cast of running backs that's unproven and, and old led by <laughs> Uh In full disclosure, uh, now, Connor B, Cooper BB was next was was not next on my list, but we can talk about him. Uh, but that's why I called him Connor because in the notes that I sent, uh, I, I referred to him as Connor, not Cooper. So that's on me. I'm not, glad uh, you fell on the sword. I'm glad you took ownership of that. You put that in Joe's head. Yeah, I mean, I'm a great teammate, despite what he may say. <laughs> hey, hey, <laughs> hey, hey, my, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna say something else. Uh, my my. Uh, must have sent me them notes when, uh, yeah, them notes were sent after we got on the air. I never read it. <laughs> uh, Not before, huh? No. It was after we got on the air, huh? No. No, because I, they literally were the last, there's something that popped in my head at the last minute, so. It was at the yeah. last minute? Yeah. You know, I, I was reading up to the time it was time to go on the show, and something, yeah. something stirred a thought in me, and I was like, you know what, we should do this. I think it's more interesting. Uh we we'll talk about a lot of guys that we're not going to talk about anymore for a long time, uh, <laughs> and so I'm, I, I'm, I was I'm excited gonna, to see. I'm excited to see what the offensive line do. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm glad they put some value in that. Right, you know, what I'm going I'm gonna I'm I'm break it down for you the way me and Chill have understood it. Mm-hmm. Offensive line is one of the most important parts of any football team. Oh, really? <laughs> you know. <laughs> You're going to break that down for me. Okay, I hear you. Go ahead. Break that down. The next part of that was, but that's the quickest way for your show to get shitty ratings, is to spend all your time talking about the offensive line. All right, then. Because don't nobody care in the big big picture. They only care about the results, not the offensive line. But anyway, I digress. You do. Uh, Because I was one of the great pulling guards in the uh, fifth grade. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) <laughs> hey, Doc, I used to whip that elbow around, come around the corner. Toot, toot. You was pulling in fifth, <laughs> in fifth grade. Yeah. Probably pulling, pull. pulling the top, Boy, shut up, shut up, shut pulling up, the top shut up, off shut up, that soda pop. That's probably what you was doing. <laughs> pulling your socks up. <laughs> Stop it, man. Uh, but I'm interested to see uh, Cooper BB do his thing because he was, he was nasty in uh, college. It'll be interesting to see if he can – Provide some of that in the NFL. Uh, up next, as we go through the top 10 players to watch at training camp, not named superstar, Jalen Tolbert, man. Is he on your radar, too? Jalen Tolbert, a, a, a disappointing uh, third round pick two years ago. It, 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 he has to show up. You know, they need him. They don't have a third receiver. He's competing with Jalen Cropper and Devontae Turpin for the third receiver job behind Steve Lamb and, and 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 Brandon Cooks, but this guy was picked in the third round to be a player. You know, he did. He was a he was this form as a rookie last year. You know, he, he you know he was more valuable on special teams. You know, he made a couple of plays, but they need to show up and, and finally live up to the expectations because if he can't beat out Jalen Cropper and, and Devontae Turpin, this is most likely his last year in Dallas. Jalen Tober, twenty-two. For 268 and two touchdowns last year. Uh, all right. Not, uh, not that great, I might say. Well, he caught, uh, it. He caught it when they threw it to him, and that, that going to give you a chance to make plays if you're out there. That's why I think. Me, well, he caught. Yeah, but I, don't need, I don't need him to be all sides in the, in the big game. No, nah, he don't need to line. <laughs> he, don't, he, need, he, don't, he don't need to line up, you know, I don't understand how that happened when you're a receiver because you point at the ref. Exactly. You know, you exactly. Don't, you don't line up three yards over the line of scrimmage. I don't know. That, what was that, 49 a game? 
Man, that I was the Packers remember. game. Okay. Was that, that, was that the playoff game he did it again? No, it was a regular season game. Regular he season. Chance of yeah. Kevin, Kevin yeah. Come back. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we don't, we don't need him to make no mistakes like that. Yeah, but that he is. Cool. He, 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 I mean, like you said, you drafted him the third to be, be a player, so we need to see more of that. Can you draft the guy in the third round to be a player? I'm just yeah. asking. Yeah, he, he's supposed to contribute. Yeah, you, you draft the third round pick to be a player, Jock. Yep. I Most just asked a question, that's, that's, man. Don't give me no attitude. I just asked a question. Don't give me attitude because you know about it. You've been covering this a long time. I just asked a question. Well, you I mean, you made it sound like to be a long. player. Like, he's yeah, supposed to you really don't contribute. Round to round contribute, round. yeah. You contribute, yeah. You got yeah. You got to give you something. You don't have something. to be no pro bowler, but you got to be a drop. Got to give you something. Okay, okay, that's, okay. I'm just, that's, that's, I'm a just, value, that's a valuable pick. Okay. I was just asking, dog. You know, I like clarification sometimes. Damn, it's kind of, uh, it's feeling kind of cool about y'all over hey, here. Hey, what, what is understood don't have to be explained. What is understood don't have to be explained. I, 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 I use the third round pick on you. I need you to play. Now, see, I would also say, but I also tell my kids, even though they're 18 and 20, make sure you lock the door if you leave the house. Because I like to I don't make know what sure they everything got to do with is understood. What does that mean? What, that what means that that's, that's everything that's understood don't out. need to be explained, but some things need to be said just to make sure there's no there's no errors along the way. All right. That's all. We, uh, speaking of errors, now we talked about this dude quite a bit last week, but I, I wanted to come back because uh, just to make sure if your mind's changed. Mozzie Smith, player to watch. <laughs> Why are you laughing, man? Is he a player? That's the question. Oh! Wow! I is mean, I just said player? last year's first round pick didn't do nothing. You know, that's one thing we need Tyler Gardner to be able to do as a first round pick to come up and be a player. Last year's first round pick didn't do nothing. He wasn't a player. And we still don't know what kind of player he's going to be. Well, I'm interested to watch him and see. Well, you have to. Of- I mean, and we've talked about this. You know, I've said this. You know, outside of Randy White, there's no, been no first round pick that showed up and did nothing as a rookie that became a player. So he's going to be a, a, a unicorn. Yeah. You know, and I want I want to say this: don't misconstrue playing with being a player. He has to play. <laughs> he gonna get snaps. Which he, which, he, which he didn't. Which he didn't do last year. He has to get snaps. Now is he gonna do some of those snaps? That's the question. The Cowboys, Cowboys need him to be a difference maker. They need to be an anchor. That's why they drafted. If you go back to draft day, and, and, and Jared Jones and Will McClay said he's going to be a difference maker for our run defense. All right. So, hey, Joe, how should we judge Mozzie Smith? Hey, man, I'm not even talking about Mozzie Smith. Today. Y'all y'all roll on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, why, hey, man? hey. I just asked how we're supposed to judge him. We're supposed to judge him on the overall run defense? Is that the best way to judge him? Because I don't know if he's supposed to have that many stats, stats per se. No, he's not going to have a lot of stats. They don't have a lot of stats. Well, he, right. he here's the thing. I think this is what I think happened with him. I don't think he was ever big as they said he was in college. And then I think he got bigger to get drafted. Yeah, does that make sense to y'all? Sometimes when you step on yep. that scale at the combine, you want to be 330 pounds. That probably wasn't his real weight when he was at Michigan. And so it was a lot of a lot of Fugazi stuff going on with him during the draft. If he lost <laughs> all of that doggone weight like that, right. sometimes them guys blow up to say, "Hey, draft me! I'm gonna be I'm gonna be this and that," you know, for the potential and all of that stuff. So I don't know, man. You got to do something. You know, you got to like 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 uh, it's it's a difference. But the difference between me, you, and Clarence is that. I don't expect that. I hated that. I hate that they said he gonna be like Clarence just said. They gonna be he gonna be a difference maker. He gonna do this. He gonna do that. They put all them projections on him. Well, he didn't do that. Uh, last year he wasn't even serviceable, but he can be serviceable. But did you want to draft serviceable? No, that's no. that ain't what you drafted. Right? Not the first round you can draft serviceable. Not, not at all. But if no. he can be serviceable, he ain't gonna get first round money ever again in his life. But he can still play on the show. What? But he ain't yeah, going to get no first round. He ain't going to get no first round whatever in his life. Well, there you go. <laughs> um, See, I'm feeling kind of kumbaya right now, Clarence. You want a hug or something? <laughs> hey, man, you know what? I chose not to argue with you. I mean, I, 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 See, I, yeah, I, there, I, you I, there you go. There you go. I said I chose, the same I thing. Made it. I, I said I the same say, thing. I, I, I chose not to argue with you. I said, well, let his let let point breathe. I'm, I'm he almost said your little point. 
Oh, I don't think that's it. Did I say Diddle Pimp? Yeah, he almost said it, but he cut it, sir. You're so in division. You're so in division, Doc. There you go. You're so in division. I did not say Diddle, anything like that. <laughs> well, you know. Because I'm not going to argue with Joe today. You know what? I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a, I'm a argue with you. But you already know I respect you. That's all That's all that matters. And I, and I love you too, my that's, brother. That's, I love you. It's all good. Here we are with the Kumbaya moment. I'm not going to No, it's, 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 that, it's, that, it's that fellow over there I got to work with. You understand what I'm saying? And that cat right there. You know, it's, hey, hey, hey. I done already got the heat out this morning already, so it's all good. Uh, this next guy, I think, got a chance to be in the uh, in the conversation with the best tight ends, Jake Ferguson. Oh, I think Jake Ferguson has, has potential. And here's the guy who drafted in a fourth round. You know, fourth round. And of course, we we can talk about the second round tight end from last year. That yeah. was also he appears to be garbage. Out of, out of Michigan, and you know they had expectations for him oh, to come man. in and be that guy. He ain't uh, done but here's the guy with nothing. Fourth oh. is showing up and showing out. Yeah, Jake, Jake Ferguson has something to him. You know, he got a little. Sw- I mean, not only does he play, but I like he just got a, some swag. To yeah, him. He, he don't. He, he don't wobble. He can dance. Look at his touchdown <laughs> interception. Yeah. He, 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 he don't take no. Hey, man. He don't take no Listen. stuff. He chippy too. No, yeah. he, he's got all of that, man. Yeah. You, you love it. You yeah. love it. You he, love it. There's nothing not to like about Jake Ferguson. Yeah. And I think he's dating one of them, them uh, Instagram models, too. So, yeah, he got it the all. The one that played with uh, Cavender, the one that played basketball at TCU. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, he, he you know, he can't. He, listen. He's winning man, right now. He, don't he, he don't he, sleep he, on the man from, just because he, he played at Wisconsin. Don't sleep on the man from Wisconsin. This yeah. man got a little swag <laughs> in it. Yeah, he think he's Travis Kelsey. No, he's, yeah, uh, yeah. he got That's a chance a to, uh, right um, he caught 71 passes for 761 and five TDs last year. Given the state of this receiving core, he got a chance to go up even more this year. Um, uh, right, catch it, again, 85, that, 90 that balls. Loves tight end. You do. That glove throws to the tight end. You go back yeah. to the, the kid that's in Houston now. Dalton you know, the, Dalton Schultz, that loves it. That was his most trusted target. You know, yeah, Dak loves his tight end. Uh, he loves that seam route, and and uh, and Ferguson is a guy that that can do that. You you you, you know. So yeah, he has a chance to, to have a bigger impact and and catch more balls for sure. You know, he, he's gonna help. But 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 again, you still and and, and I I I I don't want to get to the point where you're saying he's gonna make up for that other. No, receiver. because he's so still, still a tight end, and he's gonna average yeah. at best at best twelve yards a catch. Yeah, Which you, you still need the guy for a tight end. You know, that's one thing I've always wanted for them because you know, but they see they still don't have a guy to take the top off the defense. They still need a yep. big, fast, fast receiver. You know, I, I would love for them, you know, to, to to have gotten a big, fast receiver. And I love Brandon Cook. That's my dog. You know, when you go back to that first interception in Green Bay, he just got bullied. Brandon Cook well, is yeah, my. I mean, yeah, I was gonna say he's you not know, big, but he's fast, but he's not big. Yeah, but yeah, but and he's not faster than used to be. He can still get behind you, but yes, but but he got bullied on that first the interception against Green Bay. He also set the tone for the, for that game. Is that it, Jair it was Alexander? Right. Jair Alexander? Yeah, well, he bullied a yes. lot of people. Yes, yes, he's yeah, but bully, yeah. some but sometimes you know if you're bigger, it may not turn to the interception. It may just be incomplete pass. Right. You know, well, that's you what Jalen Tobin's supposed to do for you. He a big receiver. Right, right, right. All of that. You 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 need that guy's gonna fight for that ball. But uh, uh, anyway, to, but but I would say the tight end position, you know, not just him. They got they got some undrafted free. They got some guys. They they got a pretty good tight end position. So uh, that that's a that's a good part for this football team. Uh, I I really like this next guy, and I think he has a chance to. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I think they're going to give him a deal, but we'll see. Osa Odigizua. Give him a deal. I mean, I think you think he's you think he's gonna be a free agent at the end of the year, or you think they're gonna sign him? I think they're gonna sign him to a deal. I didn't say it was gonna be one of the biggest deals in the NFL, but you know, and I and, and I like Osa as a player. I like Osa as a man. Oh, here comes but when he say he like him as a man, that means he don't like him that much as a player. He's just a guy. <laughs> okay. I, See, mean, I thought he was more than just a nah, guy. But if you say he's just yeah, because he had three sacks the first three games, had none the next rest of the season. Nah. 
I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't look at him. I wouldn't looking at him necessarily as a as a sack guy per se. He seemed to me okay, like the, um, he was a little disruptive. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I'm just saying. Maybe, maybe he had a, a better four three defense without a a strong three technique. Three technique. They okay. get to the quarterback. He can play. He's on, he can play the under tackle. He he pretty he, good. He's the know. three technique. Mozzie's the under tackle. Yes, he can play it. But he's the three technique. If he ain't the three technique, they got none. They might well put you out there. <laughs> okay. Because if he played under tackle, they, they got less than nobody at three technique. Point taken. I mean, you need your three technique to be a player. It might have been that time we spent talking about uh, uh, traveling down the West Coast last year. Maybe that got me biased. Yeah, I mean – we had a great conversation. He used to play kids, but play, I mean, all of that, is, you know, but you got to show up and be a player at some point. You know, the, my problem with the Cowboys is that you know, I love Michael Parsons. You, love, you, you cannot be a great defense without a horse in the middle. Somebody got to show up in the middle of that defense, on that defense line, defense tackle. You need a badass defense tackle at some point. Hmm. What do you think about that, Joe? I'm not arguing with him today. <laughs> no, I'm just saying you you can have it, it all depends on what you got, how your defense constructed. You can have average to above average defensive tackles as long as you got a horse in the middle. You know, exactly. um um like um the 49ers, the 49ers don't have badass defensive tackles, but the system overall works. They not they don't have big guys on the up front. Their biggest guys like 304, I think it's hard grade. And then Eric Armstrong, who's gone, I think he, Armstead, I think he's gone, but he wasn't that big. He was like 6'7", 290. And, all, and both of them was high picks. Okay. Yeah. They were, I mean, they weren't, they weren't no. But they wasn't, you know, they're not badass. They're not, what I'm saying is, uh, they're not badass. The system is, this just system they play in to protect them big at, to protect them small linebackers. Because one is 229, uh, the other guy's like 230 and he's short. And it's all speed, and it's all grit, and it's all violence. They play over there, so I don't know. And it's, then, it's, it's, they have and I, and I, I, I guess you go back to the great four three defense of Tampa Bay, the Cowboys. I mean, they always had a defensive tackle that got to the quarterback. Yeah, but they, then, you know, but the I'm Cowboys not just looking at the Forty Nine ers. The Cowboys, I'm just at, the Cowboys, uh, go back to Doomsday. Bob Brunick, D.D. D. Lewis. And I what, said defensive tackles. They had what I'm saying, White. what I'm saying is the defense had a Hall of Famer up the, the defensive line up front was great, but the linebackers was smart. That's it. Okay, but that's what I'm saying is you can have you can my have, conversation was about the defensive tackles. What I'm saying they had you a can great, have, they had a Hall of Famer at defensive tackle. But you can have either or is what I'm saying. You I'm can sure have you either, can, but, you but can, specifically the Cowboys with the smart linebackers, the best player on that defense. The best player on that unit was a Hall of Famer defensive tackle. Do you not understand what I'm saying? Am I not being I, I clear? I do understand what you're saying. I'm saying you and don't I'm have to, to have. You, my whole conversation was this Cowboys team, most great defense, most four, four three defenses have a special player at defensive tackle. And that is my concern with this unit because he brought up Osa de Gizua, and – I don't know that they have smart linebackers. I don't know what their linebackers are at this point. What I do know is what they don't have up front. Mm-hmm. We're projecting things about this linebacker crew because of the first year we've had this. What I'm saying is, you all can I know have... is this unit is unproven okay. up front at defensive tackle. You gonna stop talking at any point? You gonna stop talking at any point? <laughs> I'm you, to, you, I mean, you, I just don't you, know why we're talking you, about. Well, I'm saying, I don't know all I'm saying about is, linebackers. I'm saying you could have either or. You don't have to have a stud up front. You can have what what behind them matters. What I'm saying, you can have either one. That's all I'm saying. Two things could be true, Clarence, if you just stop talking long enough. I still kumbaya. That, but the conversation was about defensive tackles and okay. my concern for their defensive tackle right. position. You don't have to and have I was a stud solely, up front. I was solely focusing on the fact that there are question marks at the defensive tackle position that I think everybody would, would agree with. Yeah. Now the last guy on my list, 
Donovan Wilson, big time human missile. Didn't have he was hurt most of last year. It seemed like off and on. Didn't have the impact I thought he would. Uh, can he get back to being a human missile this year? Yeah, I think he has to. I mean, you know, that's what they need him to do. I mean, he, you know, again, this this defense needs playmakers on every level. You know, you know, we we talk about the forty nine. They have playmakers on every level. You need playmakers on every level. You know, Don Wilson was a guy that you know certainly had a nose for the football and made plays. He was injured, you know, to start last season. I don't know if you ever, you know, got his group. You know, they they're going to be back to a two, uh, you know more of a two safety system instead of three safety system. They got rid of J. Ron Curse. You know, uh, so Don Wilson don't get opportunity. You know, here to to make a play and be a player. He and Hooker, you know, it, it, it's up to them to to to, to do that. Uh, you know, because if they don't, um, you know, that's an issue. Cause both of them got paid. Both of them got contracts. Uh, and and it, it's time for them to to live up to, and be players, and not just talk about Michael Parsons. You know, on the podcast. Interesting. I didn't even realize he played. He started thirteen games last year. Yeah, and one year Thomas. Is going to be coming for his job too. Yeah, he was a guy who intrigues me. Uh, right. You like him? I mean, yeah, he's, he's a guy. He played a lot, and you know, he does intrigue you. You know, he 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 can cover tight ends. He can do some things. He's a player, you know, and, and he's going to be right now the third safety. You know, he he will likely push Wilson the Hooker if, if they don't show up and and, and be players. And then, uh, and so that that concludes the top ten guys to look at. But I was curious uh, before we let you go, what's your take on Mike McCarthy? How good a coach is he? You know, I'm a defender of Mike McCarthy. I, I don't think he's got enough credit for the job he's done. They go twelve and five, twelve and five, and twelve and five. He was robbed of his first season with the Cowboys in 2020. You got the pandemic. You got new coaching staff. He made a horrible coaching hire. Defense, defense. Uh, coordinator but also lost that for for 11 games you know and 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 since then since that has been healthy you know 12 and 5 12 and 5 12 and 5 you know no coach no cowboys coach has done that since the 90s uh no coach in nfl has done that outside of andy reed the biggest difference is andy reed's won two super bowls at that time and mike mccarthy's team is is no showed in the playoffs and, and so is that on mike is that on the team i think this this playoff thing you know, certainly predates Mike, uh, but but it's on his ledger, you know, and, and, and his job is to get the Cowboys further uh, in the playoffs, you know, and get the playoffs again. I mean, if he gets a playoff, you know, it, it'll be a crime in a certain sense if he gets the Cowboys to the playoffs for a fourth straight season with double-digit wins and gets fired because they don't do that in the playoffs. I mean, I don't know how you – I mean, I understand it, but the job he's done to get to do that to win consistently during the regular season, you know, I guess it's offset by the continued fail, failures and flop in the playoffs that have predated him. But it's still on his leg. Yeah, well, I mean, it got John Gruden at one point. It gets you. If It gets some coaches if you're there long enough and you have expectations and you don't get it done in the postseason. Uh, I yeah, think Tony Dungy got a little bit of that. Uh, the, the, the problem with Michael McCarthy going this season is you're asking him, this is your season on the brink. You know, you don't have a contract. <laughs> you're asking, you're demanding him to go further. But you did not do anything to help him go further. You did not add to this team. You you gave him a defensive coordinator he necessarily didn't want. Uh, you have created an environment with your star players where they're not here. How, how you, is this the right environment to have that word about his deal and, and CD holding out to, for, to foster a final push in a season with everybody's jobs on the line. Hey, man, don't talk about the pain. Show me the baby. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> Ain't that what you told me earlier? Uh, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm talking in general. I'm talking about from an owner standpoint. Yes. <laughs> It's a results already in business. That's all Jerry about, care about. This, John, Jerry's this is, like, it's so many Yeah, but Jerry's, but Jerry's caused this pain. Jerry's, like I said, this predates him. This is all on Jerry's ledger as well. And Jerry's one who set this environment up by not getting his guys done. 
What's, but yet see, the people that's going out there, but yet the people that's going out to pay for it is Mike McCarthy, is Dak Prescott, is some of the other guys, the entire coaching staff who had signed the one year deals and have no future beyond this year. Not Jerry Jones. He's still cashing checks. He gonna be here. <laughs> These are all the reasons why I don't think they're winning 500 games, 500 this year. These are all the reasons why I think they go eight and nine. Because I think when they hit adversity, it's going to be tough to get everybody to pull together because you got your own personal agenda trying to figure out your wife at home, your girl, whoever, trying to figure out your situation. And it just leads to distraction internal. Even if it's not a big deal, you know, in the media and all that, it's just the internal dysfunction that the uh, Jones boys have created this offseason. I just, I mean, it'd be one of the greatest coaching jobs ever if he can get this team to 11 or 12 wins, regardless of what they do in the playoffs, because there's so much behind the scenes going right. on. Right, there's so much there. What about 10 wins? Just get to the playoffs. <laughs> yeah. Another double season. You got the first place schedule and you got the AFC North. Uh, that's it's, it's a tough deal, man. It's a tough deal. But that's why they paid Mike McCarthy the big bucks. To, uh, to oh no! It's get, and, and, and it starts out rough. You know that opening. You got Cleveland, Baltimore, all in the uh, first couple of months of the season, first couple of weeks of the season at Cleveland. We'll learn a lot about this team. They, if they beat Cleveland, I mean, at Cleveland, Is we'll learn a lot about this team. Team was really good at home. Really good yeah. at home. They were really good at home last year. They were horrible on the road, which we saw in the playoff game. But they're a different team at all, and you know you got you got that big defensive player of the year, defensive end going against your your your, your left tackle. You yes. got the Cleveland in their, in their run game going against his run yeah, defense. Okay. All right, you sold me. You sold me. I got it. <laughs> all right. I feel you. Got my man, but Cooper trying to get some payback. Yeah. Just got his money trying to get some payback. Let you know what you miss. All right, all right. I'm intrigued now. I'm intrigued. You know, so it, 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 it's a lot there. Before we get out of here, I need to get over to, to the press conference. Uh, you got to bring up Mark Cooper. I'm really sad to see what's going on with, with Michael Gallup. You know, that just tells you the the, the 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 other side of this business. And you know, Michael Gallup was a guy who came in this league as a precocious rookie, come out of nowhere, and, and had played with such joy, you know, came from a small school, came play with such joy. He lost his brother to suicide as a rookie, and really the Cowboys, his teammates, that they already took him on his way. He was like a little brother. He really enjoyed playing with the Cowboys, and there was talk, you know, unwarranted talk about the Cowboys having three number ones. They loved him with CD and Michael and Amari. And, I'm not Michael, but but Michael Gallup and Amari. And Michael Gallup was a good player. He wasn't number one receiver, but he had over a thousand yards one year, and you know, because of the attention of CD and and Amari Cooper, and the Cowboys made the move to get rid of Amari Cooper and elevate Gallo, coming off a knee injury. Coming off and a knee injury is the is the thing. Coming off a knee injury, and the expectations, the money, uh, not been able to live up to those coming off the knee injury. Lost his confidence, lost his joy. Uh, I, I saw that that light was off in his face last year. You know, we're all expecting, all people talking about pointing to his money, pointing to his lack of production, you know, all of this stuff. Uh, it, it just was off in him. He's, you know, then the Cowboys cut him because it's such a cruel game. It's funny that everybody always talks about, you know, that people on Twitter talking about, CD has a contract. What do you live with this contract? Well, the Cowboys, they live with the Michael Gallup's contract. <laughs> You know, people never, that never point that. Rarely and, do, rarely do. Yeah, I understand that. You know, but someone plays out play the contract, they have a right to hold out. Yeah. Um but he, he goes to the Raiders and and and, 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 and just this week before the start of camp, he retired. You know, because he's talking about his heart ain't in it. And his heart has not been in it. He just he lost his confidence, lost his joy. Uh I think if he was still with the Cowboys, he came back to the Cowboys for three million dollars. You know? Yeah. That wasn't on the table. I, I I just think that just the change of senior and everything else just and everything he's gone through just, just took it out of him and it's, and it's sad. But that's it, but that's what the game the game with two give is been about. Like Dion always said, the game don't love you back. No, nah. and uh, you know he was clearly not. And this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about Diggs. Like he was clearly not the same dude after his knee injury. Uh, before his knee injury, he averaged like eight fifty two catches, eight hundred something yards. 
and, uh, you know, scored 13 touchdowns. Well, after the injury, he was averaging, you know, 36 catches for 429 yards and scored eight touchdowns. Uh, never had more than 500 yards receiving in any of the three years he had uh, last three years in Dallas and just wasn't the same kind of dude. But, um, I, but I think it's more about his own personality. Because Diggs has always been a confident guy, I mean, which is why his cornerback. And yeah, we I mean, go back to Joey Galloway. Joey Galloway had two ACLs, okay? He was still running off from dudes and, and walking to the end zone in, in the 11th year of his career. You know, uh, you know, it, it certainly depends on the guy. I but I, say, I think that, that's what I mean. I, Everybody's I think that, not the same. I think that I think I think that, again. I think they have two different personalities. And you know, here's a guy who came from nowhere. who was just happy to be on the team. And Diggs came in with expectations. You know, he was always he was a high recruit. Drafted. I just think it's, it's just a different thing. Yes, it's a question until we see it. it. Hasn't been done. But I wouldn't put Gallup on Diggs at all. I wouldn't put Gallup on Overshawn or any of those guys. They just they they they, they just have different dog mentalities that just love Gallup as a kid, but that was never who he was. Well, you know, he's, um, uh, hopefully he can find some uh, some joy out of life. He got he made thirty million dollars playing in the league. Um, you know, mm-hmm. hopefully he was good with his money, and now he can he can find something that brings him a little passion in life. And, well, he's uh, twenty eight years old. Because he's he only twenty eight. <laughs> huh? I mean, he only twenty eight. He can do. Uh, he's got. As I like to say, the thing about if you, if you take care of your money as a professional athlete, all it means to me, and I'm not talking about the superstars. I'm talking about the normal professional athlete who plays three to five years in the league. If you've taken care of your money, then you start out your life at twenty seven, twenty eight, with a much bigger head start than most folks, and you have some options and some choices that you can do because, you know, every athlete is not a one-dimensional person. A lot of them have a lot of other interests. They can do other things, and this just gives you the money where you don't have to just take a job. You can, like, okay, I'd like to go down this path and go, you know, start this next phase of my life. Yeah, and, again, I think he also can get take a year off, get his confidence back, and come back and play in the league. All right, cool. Well, we appreciate you, man. Uh, I always you appreciate guys, you getting man. up early in California. What's that? Yeah. You know, we're old. You got to get up. You got to get up and pee when you get a certain age. I'm just telling you, I tell you, look, you got to get up. And, you know, my body's still on the <laughs> shine. <laughs> All don't righty, then. Don't talk about that, Joe. Huh? Already. Already. <laughs> you got to get hey. Junior, Fort Worth Star Telegram, longest tenured beat writer in DFW brought to you each and every Friday by my friends Brent and Juan at Smokey John's Barbecue. It is the place to go. Do me a favor. All right, I'm asking you. Do me a favor. Sometime in the next week or two, swing by Smokey John's Barbecue. Try the jam session bowl. Let me know what you think. That's all. That's all. Jam session bowl. Let me tell you about it if you don't know. It's a mac and cheese, a mashed potato base, and then, man, they put two out of five smoked meats on it. Your choice. I like to rock with the brisket and the sausage. But if you're feeling bold one day, go with the double brisket. I'm just saying. If you're feeling bold one day. I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't know. I don't know. The, if the, brisket and, bold. the brisket and the sausage. I had the brisket sausage in the mac. And I kept thinking, man, how did they make this mac and cheese spicy? <laughs> It was it was the sausage spicing man that was good right there. See, I'm not even a, I'm not even a mac guy, but that I'm that, just saying. that 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 yeah the brisket and the sausage and the mac the the, the, the spiciness of the sausage yeah that that was pretty good. See that's what's up. Well, they put them two out of five smoked meats on. Then they put all that stuff you find on a loaded baked potato like bacon bits, cheese, butter, sour cream, all that stuff, man, and then. They drizzle it or they drench it with sauce. You get to pick. And let me tell you, it is to live for. It's wonderful. It's delicious. It's scrumptious. It's whatever positive ad- adjective you can come up with. Is that it times infinity. All right? That's the jam session bowl. It's fantastic. 1820 West Mockingbird, you need that in your life. It is food to live for. That's what the jam session bowl is. Now, if you need Smokey John's in your life a little more immediately, I like to tell folks, you can run down to uh, H-E-B and pick it up off the shelf. They got the rub. They got the sauce. You just go by, pick it up, and have it at your crib today. If you can wait a couple of days, you can go to the website, smokyjohns.com, 
hit shop, click on the marketplace. You can have the rub or the sauce or these T-shirts they got now. They got a variety of T-shirts. Had those sent to your crib in a couple of days. You good to go. And if you're in Dallas, it's Joe V's Mart right off of 30, 35 and I mean 67 in Wheatland. All right. That's the exit. Take a right. It's right there. Joe V's Mart. You can get the sauce, the rub, and some banana pudding if that's how you get down. That's all. That's all I'm saying. No need to thank you, boy. I'm here for you. I am here for you. No need to thank me. Smokey John's Barbecue, 1820 West Mockingbird. Get some. And send me a thank you note later, along with a picture of that jam session bowl. Let's take a quick trip around the block, man, since Clancy Hill Jr., as usual, has taken up most of our time today. This is my favorite thing about being a reporter. I mean, about being an adult. All this stuff you wanted your mama to buy you as a kid, you could buy yourself. <laughs> I, mean, I told you about the time, I swear to you, man, I was probably 28 years old. And I was walking in the grocery store. And it was just me. And that's because I, I, I remember this conversation. I'm, I'm really about 28 years old. I'm a homeowner. My home on uh, Jamestown Court, where me and Joe used to hang out for the first time. And I said to myself, man, I wish I could get some Apple Jacks. Because hmm. my, my mom would only let us buy Apple Jacks like once a year. Please. I don't know where you're going with that. No. And I, I said, damn, I wish I could buy some Apple Jacks. <laughs> and I thought to myself, yo, fool, <laughs> if you want Apple Jacks, get you some. Buy you some. Right. Get the biggest box you can find. And I just was like, damn, you know what? I can't do that. I'm grown. And so I bought me a big ass box of Apple Jacks, man. Now, I really haven't bought them since. Maybe once or twice since then. But it's just always funny to me that I just walked, went through life for about five or six years thinking I couldn't buy Apple Jacks as an adult. Well, that, that was what I would call a cereal binge. I would come <laughs> back from, uh, I would come off my route three o'clock in the morning. That's when Walmart was open 24 hours. Yeah. Swoop through there, get some corn pops, some apple jacks, <laughs> see some other stuff. Well, my kids would wake up in heaven because I'm I don't I'm, I'm 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 comatose of about three bowls of that stuff. They going, Dad, what's up? I'm like, hey man, you see cereal? Eat cereal. There you go. You know, hey we, hey, it's all good. You know, there's a lot of that stuff going on in my house. Yeah, yeah. So the other day, man, I was on. Um, I can't even remember what, what what prompted me to do this. I really can't remember. But I got on Amazon, dog, and I was like, I want a racetrack. I want a racetrack where the cars stay on the damn track. So I typed in, and I'm just going to ask you this, dog. How much do you think a good racetrack um, costs where the car, we're going to call a good racetrack where the cars stay on the track, you know, within reason. Depends on what kind of Track I'm get. talking about top of the line. Oh, look. Now, you got the slot car tracks. Yeah, I'm talking okay. about the slot car tracks. Then you got the one tracks that, that total control race and stuff. I don't know if is that's that, still is that around. Is that better? I don't know if that's still around. Where I, I, I had both of them. I had two ty- both types. Oh, see, I, I didn't even know that. See, we learned. Uh, okay. Well, the race the racetrack never lasted long because. You got a whooping with it? No. Nah, no, no, no. <laughs> no, no. No, sir, you you talking about the wrong track. You talking about Hot Wheel track. That's what you well, got. That's nothing what you was got worse with a whip with a Hot Wheel track. My friends used to tell me. I have a Hot Wheel track in my garage right now. Is that right? Yeah, I don't play with it, but it's vintage. I thought I think I bought it for my kids back in the day. Hell, I got remote control cars. I got some Hot Wheel cars. I got a lot of toys that I bought them. They didn't. They don't want them. I'm keeping them. That I think I'm. I think I got a, a neighbor with a little boy next to. Next to me, I'm gonna give him the remote control cars. I got two trucks, but anyway, right. um, the track with the with the with the slot slot tracks. Our slot tracks was huge. Me and my brother had twin beds, so his room his was on the north side, mine was on the <laughs> south side of the room, and the track was in the middle. Right, uh, right. If my mom came in there to wake us up and check on us or something, she always stepped on part of that track. So. <laughs> Well, somebody stepped on it or broke it or something, it just got smaller and smaller through the whole year. 
It right, went right. from figure eights to over and under and all of that stuff to <laughs> a little loop. About hmm. a, you know, because we kept breaking the track. But, uh, right. yeah. yeah, I had a lot of slot cars, slot car tracks. That was a big thing when I was growing up. The most expensive slot, because I just typed in best slot car racing track for a dope. Mm-hmm. $629. What do they do? And what, what? how long is it going to take to put together? And you got to put it on a big old car. Uh, uh, you got to put it on the board. See, you, you, you got different things. You can get you a big old piece of plywood, put the track on there. Are you going to build it around your apartment? What you going to do? How you going to do yeah. it? I was I was just looking at him like I, I'm not going to buy a six hundred dollar slot car track, but I was just impressed that it was out there. What I would like to do is buy probably like at some point, not like this week or next week. I would like the next one down, maybe three or four hundred dollars, and I'd like you know eight or ten car different cars, and I think it would just be relaxing to go up there and run the car. Now I could be fooling myself; it might be fun for a weekend, and then I'd be like. That's oh, where you run this. into the problem <laughs> with those with those with those hobbies is they end up sitting on the shelf. You know, you end up reselling it or yeah. something. Well, see, but I was that, I was wondering if my grandson would be interested in that. Now he's nine, and I wondered if we could get down with that. But I don't know because today's kids are not like when we were growing up. It might be like, why would I want to do this when I could play with NASCAR on the on the TV? You never know. You never know. So I don't know, but I was just intrigued by it. It's worth a shot. Bit. It's worth a shot, though. And then, uh, and, and I say that because I used to be, like a lot of people our age, I used to be really big in electric football bzz, as a kid. And yeah. one of my best friends right now, kid, part of his business is he makes custom electric football men that if we had the men that he makes, we'd all flunked out of school. Um, and he makes custom electric boards. Yeah, the stadiums. And yeah. Uh, I tried to do it, man, and it just wasn't. To be honest with you, I just enjoyed Madden more than I enjoyed playing the, on the board by myself. Now playing against people, it was still fun, but just playing solo, solitaire, it wasn't as much fun as it had been when I was a kid. I enjoyed playing Madden more. But uh, you know, it's, it's just these things. As an adult, you look around and, and hobbies that you get into. Or you explored it. The, well, like I, I was an electric football nut. So, yeah, we we played that. We cut names out in the phone book, put them on people, and put them on them. Yep. <laughs> and we painted, we, t- we paint, took model paint. We had all 2018. It was 2018 back in the day. Right, right. And we flipped the coin, played the schedule. That man said flip the coin and played the well, schedule. Well, we had a game. Let's say we had Green Bay versus the Bears. You want to play that, man? Nah, we'll flip a coin and see who won that. <laughs> you want to play Dallas versus Washington? Yeah, let's play that because I got Washington and you got Dallas. All right, let's play. let's play. So we just did it like that. We took stats and all that. Pretty oh, I, I got reams of stats. Now, there's a part of me that still wants, because they, you know, I would like to, uh, just as a collector said, I'd like to have all 32 teams with a nice board. Uh, you know, that's, you know, I got a lot of things if I if I was rich that I would do as for from a hobby perspective. Yeah, and you're gonna need and, a big big room, to put room. all that stuff in storage. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, yes, yeah, sir. I'm not disputing. It. I'm not disputing any of that. Yeah, that's part of the problem. You get into them hobbies, man. That's why I say, you know, yeah, so, get expensive. I don't know, but uh, hey, we appreciate you. Remember, uh, check out uh, our YouTube station, The Real Jacques Talk. We just dropped the Patrick Creighton interview the other day. It's fantastic. Uh, you can follow us up on, uh, you can also follow the show on YouTube. I sound like Joe Biden for a minute. Uh, YouTube at The Real Jacques Talk. Hit me up on Twitter or X at JJT Journalist. Remember, if you think you follow me, you probably don't because somebody hijacked my account and I refuse to pay the ransom. And then I'm on Clapper at I am Jean Jacques Taylor. For Big Join the Big Rig, till we chat again, you guys be blessed.